Good evening, everyone. You're watching Witness with Katrina, and uh, I'm Vakas Rafiq, filling in for uh, Katrina Hussain. Of course, she's in the flood-affected areas of Sindh these days, and uh, remember, we saw a very moving episode of Witness just yesterday that she had sent to us from there. And surely in the coming episodes, uh, she will be on the program with us to give us more pers uh, perspective and analysis to the catastrophe that has struck Sindh. But tonight on Witness, we are going to talk about another problem. The dengue champion, the Sri Lankan government, when the virus struck there, had threatened to jail its people who did not clean up water puddles. That was in an effort to combat a rise in cases of dengue. Here in Punjab, there have been demands for the chief minister to resign over mishandling the issue. People are angry because the spread of the dengue has been alarming to say the least. Just today, three died in Lahore and one in Shekhupura. And out of the 7,000 infections in Punjab, uh, the exact figure that I've been given, 6,666 are from Lahore. But then we wonder if we should talk about a virus that's spreading thick and fast for it is capable of flourishing in something that's as modest as a flower pot. So tonight on the program, we will try and understand what exactly is the situation, what went wrong or did anything actually go wrong at all or the poor janta was simply destined to catch dengue and with me in the studios to take part in the conversation tonight dr amna butter who is an mpa from the pakistan people's party thank you dr butter for joining us thank and uh, sitting next to her is uh, express 24 7's mohammed rizwan he's our correspondent here in lahore and the reason we have uh, rizwan in the studios today is because he's been extensively uh, reporting on dengue for us rizwan thank you good to have you in the studio as a change and i'm sure you'll be independent and uh, sitting next to Rizwan is a very familiar face uh, here on Witness, uh, Mr. Parvez Malik. He is the MNA uh, Pakistan Muslim League N and is of great relevance for us today because uh, he is the member of uh, the Chief Minister's response team to Dengue. Thank you so much, Mr. Malik, Please. for joining us tonight. <coughs> So I, I want to begin with you because uh, since you are a member of the Chief Minister's uh, response team, first of all, uh, just brief us a little about this response team because there's been lots of criticism, of course, you expect us to come to that. But first of all, what is this response team? And also, please talk to us about the assessment uh, of the problem. Well, uh, <coughs> uh, thank you very much for inviting me. As you said, the response team is to, to, to beat, to fight the challenge, you know, which has been brought by dengue fever and all that kind of mosquito attacks and that, that sort of thing. You know, it's a response team which is very regularly meeting every day, sometimes twice a day also, to see and assess and to coordinate all the efforts. You know, there are so many dimensions to it. One, as you said, virus dimension, then you have breeding sort of issues, then you have ad adult mosquitoes, then you have hospitalization curative arrangements, management issues, then you have deaths coming on, then you have so many other fogging, thermal fogging. You know, there's so many types of uh, sort of activities which are going uh, simultaneously for that. And most of, most of all, I think the, the, the most important is all right. the awareness of it. How, right. how, how do you do your housekeeping? How That's do you keep your That's something great. That's something great. That people in authority your, are taking And try notice. to mobilize as many people as possible. Right. It is a disease which probably we feel 15% is part of this curative and all that, but 85% 80, right. it can be dealt with by socially changing the, the... All right. We'll talk about how to handle the crisis, how to prevent it. But 7,000 people, Mr. Malik, affected here in the Punjab. I'm just curious when the response team members you meet, mean, fact, what's the assessment that you guys make of the I think, problem? I think so. The, 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 the problem is serious. It's not uh, serious, but I think everything is within, within the manageable limits. You know, it, we have a story of so many countries, you know, and Sri Lanka is one. In 2009, 350 people died and 35,000 people were got infected of that also. So it's, it's, it's a phenomena that it comes, you know, it's like an epi epidemic, you 100%, you, you know, you cannot predict. It, it erupts and it erupts through mm. people traveling from so one place to you, other. You think it's manageable? Uh, Dr. I Burton. said it's, it's under, under management at, at this point of time. You know, right. We have control, we are attending to all segments, you know, as I said, breeding, okay. adult mosquito, 
for thermal fogging and despite public that, public public people support between the numbers of 48 and 52 have uh, unfortunately died because of dengue uh, dr butter how do you look at this uh, how's the assessment i mean do are we looking at uh, the right uh, picture are we clear on what are we facing the I challenge think, uh, this is uh, very nice all these efforts are being made but unfortunately these are six months too late this response team or this prevention team or whatever you want to call it, should have uh, really uh, happened in perhaps spring. Because we knew in past few years uh, the dengue um, uh, fever has been increasing. The incidence has been increasing in Punjab especially. Um, last year in Lahore there were many um, people who were infected by it. And um, so this year we should have known it's going to happen and we should have been prepared for it. Isn't so the response team is too late now. Not really, you know, in the sense that I mean, because what has happened is... Uh, just like is this please allow me to add, I was looking at some figures what Dr. Butter is saying and around between 1,600 and 2,000 infections were there here in Punjab last year. So yeah. we should have taken some preventive measures. And also because the important thing to know is that people who were inv infected last year, because this virus has four types, so people who were infected last year are immune to that type but they are vulnerable to the other types and now when they will get the second type or third type or fourth type they will be they are probably the ones who are getting sicker they'll be more critically ill so it was all the more important for us because the management of this disease is really prevention 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 awareness 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 and that we should have done that Right. Really, in, and, and I'm so, speaking not so as a politician, I'm speaking as a doctor. So, you, know, you know, we formulated our national guidelines last year. And according to the protocol, we had to start spraying of 15, from 15th of July. That's the preventive uh, portion, you know. And what happened was, then we, we started spraying everything on 15th. We had all the equipment. You know, we had everything planned, and for equipment. we had the equipment, we had the medicines, we had the doctors, we had the research sort of thing, and we had the national guidelines in place. On the f and we started spraying from 15th of September, but what happened was the, 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 the rains, the monsoons came a month earlier, you know. Last time, we the first, uh, the first... So, uh, Dr. Butters uh, uh, just said that the, the, the first virus we in no, we No, we started from 15th of July, which is a correct time to do that, but we, since we had rains earlier, probably now, next year, probably we'll start it earlier also. But, you know, with the experience we had last year, the first dengue was reported somewhere in September last time. Last, mm. last year, but it came a, a month earlier. We couldn't make that assessment that it will come a month earlier, but the protocol said that we have a written protocol which says that we should start our efforts from 15th okay. of July. And secondly, I must tell you, dengue is not a killer disease at all. It's not a killer di disease at all. What the happens people is, are what, dying. what people are dying, what I'm saying, people, are dying. Uh, people are dying of mismanagement, maybe, right. maybe and ble bleed bleeding, and also with some other complications attached to a dengue patient. That, that's very important, you know. Okay. We have seen very uh, and people dying of right. uh, dengue, but because of other, other sort of uh, diseases attached to it, some has asthmatic problems, some, some have diabetes course, problems. The, uh, that, that's sort of complicated. That's that's medical, they're more vulnerable. Uh, that's, uh, that's the let's correct get word. some medical insight into it. And uh, that's why I think that we should have been more prepared, um, because 85 to 90 percent of our population cannot read. And they don't have access to newspapers because 50 plus percent are women, 25 percent are children. So 75 percent of the population, we really should have done uh, public health type of measures like maybe go to door to door and but tell them this outbreak is coming, be prepared. Right, in the newspaper today, public awareness campaign launched against the dengue virus today. announces the chief minister. No, no, Shabash it's not Sharif. now, it's not now. I have held so many seminars myself. You know, I'm responsible for one of the 10 towns in Lahore. But these I, seminars should have been held. I have done so many held. seminars. We have, you know, this we, is we had experts <laughs> coming from WHO. We had this experts coming from... This should have... This is, this is, this is, this is one, one, of, one of the seminars the chief minister himself addressed one large seminar about a month back in, in, in uh, Alhamra Arts Council. I was there also. Then mm -hmm. we had so many seminars and it's been... So and what now, is this public awareness campaign? So oh. this is a massive campaign now we are needing. You know, we are not afraid of uh, the adult mosquitoes. Now we are more concentrating more on the breeding. All right. On the, on the, the on prevention. The lavra and all, the, all, all that kind of the prevention 
of trying to stop the breeding of uh, <coughs> the, the, the right. mosquitoes. Now, uh, Rizwan, you've been uh, covering the situation at the hospitals. I've myself spoken to you quite a few times on the broadcast. And um, I still remember one of the comments you made. You said that this public awareness campaign and all the measures are quite cosmetic, right? That's right. What did you see? I'm not yeah. leading, of course, but yeah. uh, just tell us what did you see at the different hospitals, especially the public hospitals, of course. Yes, uh, because uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, most of the stress or the emphasis we have seen so far in this uh, uh, against this den dengue virus from the Punjab government is, uh, Mr. Malik is absolutely right, that is public awareness. Uh, public awareness in the sense that when you go to hospitals, you see there are at least 200 to 300 patients who are unattended and uh, nobody is there to look after them because uh, we, we have only three to four major public hospitals and their feeding area is quite large. So everybody rushes to the hospital, whatever he is carrying, even it's a fever, even it's a... Can you walk us through fever. what a person who thinks that he has dengue, uh, there's a fear factor also, we'll talk about that. That's right. But what happens yeah. when a person who thinks that he or fears that he's um, got the dengue virus reaches a public hospital? What does he go through, briefly? Yeah. Well, he, he goes through uh, first the security of the hospital and then he uh, gets in to the emergency. And then f on the emergency, there is a queue. It's saying that uh, the queue for dengue patients and it's a large queue and then long, long queue. And then you, uh, if you lucky enough to get out of that queue in half an hour, then they would send you for the testing. And the testing takes three to four, four hours. So that three to four hours are enough to, uh, you know, drain, just drain that any patient who comes in. I understand there is a lot of pressure on the public hospitals, but at the same time, I mean, Mr. Malik was talking about the management of the disease. Mm. There is no management at all. I mean, there it's were two, rest two things sh th that should have been... Uh, management of disease, I mean, how to treat the patient? No, no, no. I mean, before the patient, I mean, prevention. Mm. Uh, first, we go, go, go to prevention. Mm. In Lahore, I, I have not seen many places where the sprays are being made. I mean, the prevention is, first the part is that oh. you fumigate the places yeah. and you take out the idle water which is lying in the communities. Mm. So that is one thing which is not happening. And the second thing is, the, which is quick testing services to the people so that they know that if they don't have dengue, they go back home. And if they have dengue, then they should be admitted. Here what happens is, they are even if they have dengue, you don't have beds to accommodate them. And if, if you have not dengue, then you m must have uh, uh, having another kind of disease. And if, you're not, uh, if you are unfortunate enough, then you will pick up the disease from the hospital. And we'll talk about it later, how the hospitals are at the moment infested with dengue virus because, and they're Sri Lankan experts, mm -hmm. when I was talking to them, they were You've talking about... you met them, right? Yeah. And uh, they were saying that Hospitals are the places where most of the people are picking up virus at the moment. And did they point out anything on the situation, the conditions at the hospitals here in Lahore? Yes, they were, uh, they were no. appalled. They no, were appalled. No, 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 the comment they made, and it came in the papers also, they said much more better than they have back home. The, the hospital facilities, even then the hospital, no, 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 the ho hospital facilities have been declared by Sri Lankans as the best possible. Hospital. Uh, but can, I'm saying the hospital. I would have, like to chip in here. Can, I would yes. like to chip in I, here. I, I can, I can just briefly, take that challenge. I, I would like to chip in here just briefly. They came, the day they came, the next day they started sample testing from the various public places. The first place they went, to, went was a public hospital. And that was, uh, uh, let me tell you, that was Gangaram Hospital. So they took the sampling from outside the emergency block of the Gangaram Hospital. And that was, according to them, was they were appalled by what they saw. They say that it is infested with the dengue virus. Even a healthy person who has taken a dengue patient to the uh, hospital, he will definitely pick up the infection. And we needed, Most of the infection, We Vakas, needed the Sri Lankans to come and tell us that they could read in <laughs> well, the flower. Well, 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 most of the infection, you, you can, 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 can